Lynn. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, Always a joy for me to be here. And I welcome you. I welcome you to our Temple of Light. Welcome to those of you joining us for the first time in the sanctuary as well as online. I'm really delighted to share the message this morning. And I hope that it will be a joy for you as it was a joy for me in preparing it. Now, in late 2020, my neighbor, Aunt Claire, passed. The house was sold and renovation by the new owners went on for more than a year. One minute Aunt Claire was there, the next minute she was gone. One minute the cul-de-sac on which I lived okay. was quiet and peaceful. The next minute the noise of the construction became the order of the day, every day for over a year. I had to put up with knocking and hammering. I had to deal with changing work crews coming and going, colorful expletives, you know, as people expressed themselves, and the ever-present cannabis perfume <laughs> wafting into my office morning, noon, and night. My Zoom sessions definitely went to a higher level. Now that the renovation is complete and the street is once again quiet, well, I guess until the new neighbors move in. Well, such is the nature of things. Life happens, caterpillars become butterflies, seasons change, we grow up, we get old, and we die. Some changes occur because of circumstances. Other changes are self-generated under our own control or dependent upon others. But change brings choices. Should I stay or should I start job hunting? Should I start my business now or wait? Either way, the choices that we, we, we make to navigate change today will determine the quality of, of the experience that we have tomorrow. So I've entitled my message this morning, my encouragement, Navigating Change Today for a Life-Sustaining Experience Tomorrow. Now, change is something that is necessary for our greater good. We are meant to progress through life, always moving upward and onward. This is what growth is all about. If you were to take a moment this morning to reflect, say, on a significant change that has taken place in your life, say that maybe the choice to further your education, move house, start a business, deal with your children leaving home, maybe navigate an illness, lose a loved one, etc. Every one of those events meant leaving something or even someone behind and making a shift into the realm of the unknown with its fair share of anxiety and uncertainty. Back in the late 70s, a group of new science of, science of mind students, led by our founder, Dr. Elmer Lumsden, needed the pricely and princely sum of 70,000 Jamaican dollars, um, translated to today's terms at 154 to 1, 460 US dollars to purchase this property at 46 Ferry Avenue. By the way, it was, we're not talking a down payment. We're talking about the full cost of this property. 460 Jamaican dollars. US, US dollars. dollars. Glad you're listening. <laughs> In retrospect, it wasn't their Tea Party fundraising that made them successful, but the unwavering commitment and resolve that they had to make this place their spiritual home. And that required a dramatic shift in thinking and a willingness to demonstrate the principles they were learning about at the time. I am sure that you can think of a significant change that you have experienced when you accomplished something or overcame something, when at first you had no idea how you were going to make it happen. Can you recall such an event? You just, as I would say in Jamaica, you did just go in it. 
and we just know that the doors opened and spirit just moved us into that experience. Now, those of you who have been around for a while can recall the many changes that have taken place here at 46 Perry Avenue. In the 41 years of our existence, we have done a major renovation on our sanctuary. We put in the meditation garden, the Sunday school, and created the labyrinth. We experienced the changing of the guard as our beloved Reverend Elma passed the baton on to Reverend John. Our practitioner core grew, and our congregation changed as people came and went. Most recently, the pandemic pushed us kicking and screaming into the virtual world, and we are now live streaming our classes and services. There are still challenges. Sometimes you have a, you know, issues with sound or video, but hey, as we would say, we guess and go through. We have also created a new strategic plan, which is requiring that we change the way we do things, as the way we have been doing things is just not working so well for us anymore. And to top it off, this, this one is hard. Our pastor is about to retire, and we are preparing to recruit someone new. And because we are a Centers for Spiritual Living affiliate, we have to go through a process with CSL. So some questions are coming up. Who will this person be? We know that he can't fit into those shoes. So you know, what kind of shoes will he wear? Why does it have to be someone from foreign? How will he or she fit in? Will we like them? Will they like us? Will they have the, what we call the chutzpah? The, the vibe, the energy, the drive to help us as a church community grow? How will we afford to pay them? Lots of questions. So when, when you are going through a change, do you have those kinds of questions? Do you ask the how and the what and the when and the where and the why? We ask and we question and we challenge. Right now, I have a client who is experiencing great stress because of the upcoming retirement of her senior manager. And the questions that are being asked, how will we manage without her? Where will we fit into the scheme of things? Will things continue same old, same old? Will we change? What will that change look like? What kind of support will we get from the director? Questions, questions, questions. Now, whether the change is about me in my life, or it's about you, or it's about the temple, or it's a personal or professional matter, change is still change. And it often brings resistance. And some of those things are, you know, the resistance looks like, look, the resistance looks like this. We cling dearly to the past and to how things have always been and what so-and-so used to do. We view the change as harmful to our present situation. We are afraid we might fail and look bad. There is mistrust about the intentions of others. We are uncertain about the unknown, and we're just not motivated to change. As spiritual beings having a human experience, we acknowledge that it is okay to have these thoughts. And we need to not resist. They talk about resist not evil. This is a good demonstration. You feel what you feel, just allow those thoughts to flow. However, as students of this teaching, we call the science of mind, we know that we can embrace and experience change with ease, with grace, without resistance, as after all, we know that the universe is indeed unfolding as it should. And seeing that we have choice, we can change our thinking and entertain thoughts of possibility rather than those of fear and anxiety. In other words, we control the thoughts we have about the changes that are taking place. And we want to lift our consciousness into the realm of possibility rather than leave it mired in doubt, lack, and limitation. The story is told about a professor who presented his students with a piece of paper with just a black dot in the center. 
and asked them to write about what they saw. All of them, without exception, defined the black dot, trying to explain its position and the, the philosophy of this black dot on this piece of paper. The professor remarked that no one wrote about the white part of the paper. <laughs> Everyone focused on the black dot. It's often the same with us, don't. We focus mostly on the perceived problems and issues with, of course, good reasons. Why proposed changes won't work? The truth is that the black dots are very small when compared to our many blessings. One of the things I've learned is that with every ending, when something ends, it doesn't mean that it disappears forever. There's still some good that we are carrying into the next period. Consider that black dot thinking takes up space in our minds and blocks the flow of our greater good. If Dr. Elmer had chosen to focus on the black dot of not having the money to purchase this property back in the 70s, we would not be here. Can you imagine what these two and a half acres are worth now? <laughs> and, and since we are talking about this property, our strategic plan has outlined wonderful ideas to make it a self-sustaining spiritual oasis in the heart of the city and implement several income earning projects. Our goals are big, hairy, audacious, and naturally, there is resistance. We do, however, understand this resistance. We welcome it and know that we are divinely guided in terms of how we deal with it. However, as a community, we need to focus on what we are prepared to create together. This is not a one-man thing. This is not a Reverend John thing, or a Board of Trustees thing, or a this committee thing, or a that committee thing. It is an all of us thing. Do you know that if this property, there's, there's nobody, there's no single person to inherit this property. It belongs to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living and we are the members of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, so it is our property. We know that all the power in the universe conspires to help us, and it will guide us and support us as it will help all of us through any change that we have to navigate, whether it's personal, professional, right, or it, it, it's regarding our own church here. Isn't that comforting? You know that even, <laughs> um, I thought of sharing a little bit about um, Spencer Johnson's Who Moved My Cheese? <laughs> you know, to talk about the writing on the wall. When the, 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 little, the little mites, um, no, it, it was the two guys who expected that cheese would be there all the time. And one morning they woke up and there was no cheese. Even although they saw it every day that went in, they saw the cheese getting less and less and less. So they saw the writing on the wall, but they did nothing. And then one morning, ta-da, no cheese. So we see, often see the writing on the wall and we don't take action. We have to change. Some of us still want to hold on to the tried and familiar. We must, however, live in the now. Not in the past, holding on to what my ex-husband used to call the used to was. He would say, what used to was can't are. <laughs> Our founder, Ernest Holmes, tells us, and I quote, if we disconnect ourselves from the stories of the past and learn to harmonize with everything that transpires today, and, he's, and he didn't qualify that everything, he didn't say harmonize with the good, and, just, and, and so on. He said everything, even the not so good. Then tomorrow will blossom like Ponciano trees. No, I mean, that's not what he said. Like a new flower in our experience. So the idea is to just disconnect from the past, live powerful in the now, and create what it is that we want to experience tomorrow. 
So much is possible when we are open in consciousness and stay connected in prayer. Consider that Joseph, the one with the coat of many colors, he moved from being a prisoner to becoming prime minister. Saul became Paul and moved from persecutor to preacher. And David progressed from a shepherd boy to a king. To a king. Now that is change for you. So we all desire a future that is full and rich and life-sustaining. So we are the ones who have to make it happen. We must stretch our consciousness daily through our spiritual practice and the application of that practice in our day-to-day -day experience. I, I can't tell you how powerful that is. We, we, we learn stuff on a Sunday morning here. We come to class. We read the books. And yet still, oftentimes, we still slip back into the valley of the shadow. Some people say when we get there, we, not, we ought not to stay and build a condominium. <laughs> right? But being powerfully self-aware, we know that, we know when we slip. And we know how to bring ourselves up. And if we can't, we know that a practitioner or a minister is, is just a phone call away. Right? But we have to apply it when life happens. How do we allow the truth that we, we know intellectually to be our guiding light, to be that which guides us and drives us and nurtures us and supports us? Remember that every one of us is the cause of our own experience. I learned that from Dr. Tom Johnson decades ago. I am the cause to my experience. Nobody else. And even when life is happening, I control how I respond. And our faith must be greater than our fear. So as we contemplate the changes that are swirling around us, let us consider the following. Since we are the ones that stand at the center of our every experience, we are the ones who must change. It's not Reverend John, it is not your husband or your wife or the director or anybody else. I am the one who must make the change. We are the ones who must take charge of our thoughts. No one can do this for us. Um, I'm going to share an, a few affirmations and I want you to, to, to say them with me. So with this one, I stand confidently at the center of my every experience. Let's say that together. I stand confidently at the center of my every experience. We need to develop single-mindedness regarding what we want. Not spend too much energy or any energy on what we think we don't want. Right? Wherever our focus goes, that's where the energy flows. So what we complain and, com and quarrel about, those are the things that we are going to maintain and sustain. And, and this single-mindedness will allow us to stay on track with any plan we make, personally or wherever, wherever, wherever else. We cannot waver. When we know exactly what it is that we want, this is where we focus our prayer work. Let's say it together. As I stand steadfast in faith, spirit supports my every desire. As I stand steadfast in faith, Spirit supports my every desire. We need to stop entertaining thoughts about black dots. When you, what, what, when you focus on what will go wrong, it will. When you focus on what will go wrong, it will. Let's say it together. I count my many blessings. Nothing else matters. I count my many, many blessings. blessings. Nothing else matters. So you might have a vision. CSL's vision is a world that works for everyone. And we see our vision as being a lighthouse in this community, in this country, in the world. So once we have our vision, whatever that vision is, we need to think and feel and act as if it already exists. We must continue to feed our subconscious mind with the kinds of messages that are in harmony with our highest desire. Let's say it together. 
I take charge of my thoughts, my feelings, and my actions. I take charge of my thoughts, my feelings, and my actions. If you don't like how something is unfolding, you can change your mind about it. If you don't like how something is unfolding, you can change how you see it. You can change your mind about it and choose something different in consciousness. This one, I may have to break it in two. I'll, I'll read it once and then we'll break it up. I have the power to choose, and I choose only that which is in alignment with my highest good. Let's say, I have the power to choose. I have the power to choose. And I choose only that which is in alignment with my highest good. Together. And I choose only that which is in alignment with my highest good. To the temple community, I invite you all, every single one of you in this room, every one of you joining us online, I invite you to get down on the field and play the game full out with us. We need to come off of the stands and we, you know, watching some of the, the um, Oregon games. We have a lot of support, don't we? Plenty, plenty yellow in the stands, don't? And I'm sure that many of those um, fans are saying what this athlete should do or shouldn't do or why them come out of the trap, they block that way or they, you know, so why them not running? <laughs> well, you know, we need you to run with us. Okay? So we need your consciousness. We need your expertise. We need your time. We need your talent. We need your treasure. And, and that will help us to build our new tomorrow. That together we have already established in mind. Because it's there, you know, we have established the blueprint. And now we are filling it with what we do. No effort or contribution is too small. I'm making to, make, to help us make some phone calls. Right? To support us on a committee. And if it's a $10, then say every mickle make a muckle, don't. Whatever it is, we welcome it. Collaborative, co collaborative connections are what give us the tools for sustainable, positive change. So here's the affirmation. I stand ready and willy, willing to give my time, talent, and treasure in service of this community. Together, I, I stand, stand ready, ready and, and willing to give my, my time, talent, and treasure in the in service, service of, of this community. community. Now, even when conditions of lack or limitation are screaming at us, you can't, I can't, we have to know that God is our unfailing source of supply. I hear the question, where are we going to get the money from? Too often. We practice principle. We teach principle. I should say teach it first, then practice it. God is our infinite source. I want this, the encourage the, the homework should be go out and take one of those branches of the Ponciana tree and try to count how many flowers you have there. Or when you go to the beach, try and count the grains of sand. Or try and count the stars. It can't happen. As a child, I used to go to Duns River Falls and look at the water flow, flowing down the, the rocks. And I remember turning to my father, and I would have been at least, or at most, eight years old, because that's the year he died. And said, Daddy, the water going to finish? <laughs> Up to now, water is still cascading down those rocks. Don't. God never finishes. God's supply is inexhaustible. And we have to acknowledge that and recognize that every single time. And don't look at the black dot of what is in the bank account. 
or what, it, what a minister is going to cost us in terms of salary when the balance sheet says X. We have to go beyond the, 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 the physical. This is what metaphysics is about, friends. Beyond the physical. Jesus never looked at a, the man with the, with the, with the, um, that was lame and said, Oh, what happened to your foot? So how long it stays so? You, what you put on it? He just said, take up your bed and walk. That, that consciousness that generated two and a half acres back in the 70s. That is, that is a consciousness that we need to tap into. That wellspring of awesome givingness to do what we need to do in our lives and in our community. So let's say together, God is my unfailing source of supply. All my needs are already met. God is my unfailing source of supply. All my needs are already met. Our spiritual practices are designed to create beliefs that reflect our higher self. Beliefs of abundance, empowerment, love, and compassion. When we accept those beliefs deeply, our ego shifts. The ego defends what we come to accept. We change our beliefs, and the ego supports the new beliefs. Let's say it together. As I change my beliefs, my life changes. As, As I, I change, change my beliefs, beliefs my, my life, life changes. changes. We must apply what we learn in our classes and practices when we are facing the challenges of life, growing in our ability to release negativity and embrace our good. We all have to do the work of releasing, limiting beliefs, and embracing thoughts of greater possibility, wisdom, and love, thereby making a better future. Affirmation. There is that within me that is greater than any challenge I might face. Together. There, there is, is that, that within, within me that, that is greater than any, any challenge, challenge I might face. <laughs> and know that the discombobulation of change. I love that word, you see? <laughs> the discombobulation of change is only for a time. You know, I had a conversation with Reverend Michael yesterday. And he said that change is much like making fruit punch. You have a whole assortment of fruits and water and sugar and lime and thing. And then we have a lot of noise. <laughs> as you put it all in the blender and turn it on. And then afterwards you have a delicious beverage. So we need to just go with the flow of the noise and know that something great is going to come out of it at the end of the day. So let's say it together. I navigate the noise of changing circumstances with poise and patience. I navigate the noise of changing circumstances with, with poise and patience. Yes. You know, when I was looking for the, the hymn for this morning, I, I had three hymns that, that I couldn't choose. And then I said, Spirit, what I must do? Which one you want? And Spirit said, use all three. We've never done anything like that before. So a new day is indeed dawning. That new day is today, now, this moment. This day is when we let our darkest fears be dispelled by the light of truth. This day is one of promise for our glorious temple and for each and every one of us. We invite the living spirit to guide us as we embrace change and plant the seeds of a brand new, prosperous, and life-sustaining future. Are you on board with me? Yes. I don't, I'm not convinced. Are you on board with me? Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, friends. Love you, bless you, and I just know that we are in for our, an amazing fruit punch. Namaste. <laughs> Yes, we are. We are indeed on board for that marvelous, refreshing fruit punch. 
Thank you, Sandy, for those words of encouragement this morning. She spoke about change, that it requires choices. It requires making a shift and moving into a new experience. And whatever the change, personal, professional, spiritual, we must resist evil. We, you know, resist not evil, but we have to choose. And we can change our consciousness. And last, but by no means least, she said we needed single-mindedness. Stop concentrating on the black dot. Change how we see things. We have the power to choose. Let us give her another round of applause. 